dipping into some foundation medium with my flat brush. I'm going right into some white, blue, imagine that for a sky, white and blue, little tiniest touch of red because the blue by itself is so bright. So a little bit of red will calm it down. I don't want too, too much. Now, starting with overlapping X strokes right here at the top of the canvas, we're going to work in our beautiful blue sky today. Just blue sky. More white in it as well. Just needs more pigment, more paint. So more white, more blue, more red. I want it to cover in one coat if possible. And you do, by, do that by putting it on nice and thick. Don't, don't put it on too sparingly. When you're painting with acrylics, there's no reason to for, for the background. There's no reason to, to go light on your paint. You want to have plenty of paint. Now, I'm going to do a very simple sky. Very simple. I'm going to take my, this is my two inch blender brush. I'm just going to dip it in the water and then wipe it off. So it's just barely moist. Take a little bit of white, tiniest speck of red, just so we're not using pure white. Again, this is dry. That makes a big difference. All right. Now my mountain's going to be up here. I don't know. I don't need much of a cloud. I'm just going to set this brush down and, and just use a big, the big brush, a little bit of moisture in that brush and just create that cloud effect. Wipe the brush off so there's not as much pigment. And then I'm going to just feather the edges slightly. This is what's called dry brush blending or glazing. That's what this technique is. I'm going to take the round brush, custom tapered round brush, and I'm, I'm just going to fill in a little bit, maybe a little along the bottom of some of these clouds, just quickly, quickly. Some of that same color. Boom, boom, boom. A lot of this won't, won't really be that noticeable, I think, once you get your mountains in, but some of it may be nice. Put a little more paint down, blend that. Okay, that'll work. Just soft edges. I recommend going in sections of about an inch or two at a time. I'm probably doing more than I should here. About an inch or two at a time is all I recommend. There's my color. Again, it's just white with the tiniest little touch of red. Now I'm going to take some white, a little bit of our blue, white and blue, uh, just some of the sky mix. I still got that wet because remember, I'm continually misting my palette and I am going to actually take the mist, the little mister bottle and squirt a little water there until it just begins to run. Okay. There, and if you look at my brush, you don't really see paint in it hardly. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to glaze the sky. What glazing does is it's a way of blending acrylics after they're dry. See some of these hard edges and some of this just lumpiness. You can totally get rid of that with a glaze. I'm going into some purple, making up some purple here. Blue, red, and white. Create a purple. Almost, honestly, a little bit on, on the red side. A little bit on the red side. Kind of. It's not too much on the blue side. That's pretty. Well, it's kind of neutral. I don't know. Well, you, you decide. You decide what to call that. There's what it is. You, you figure out what you want to call it. Fairly neutral, I guess. Purple. There we go. Now, the foundation medium is important. If you don't add the foundation medium to your paint, then um, it's not going to flow as well. And it'll, it'll look a little more blobby, a little more like... See how I'm getting some of the... Um, some of the canvas showing through. I like that. This is far better than water. If you if you add water, see water is a solvent for acrylic paint. This medium flows much, much better than water. But it doesn't flow as much as water. So if you're going to use the liner brush or something, then you would, of course, have to use water. But for anything else, I mean, the foundation medium is going to be good. And it adds, this is another hidden benefit of that foundation medium, is that it adds a bit of durability so if I did this with water, it would make the paint like I could easily push through that paint when I go to do my next layer. But if I use foundation medium, it adds a tremendous amount of durability. So that's important. So with all that being said, that's why that's why I would encourage you to use the foundation medium and not just water for this step. A little tiny micro filbert brush, so tiny. It's a great brush for little detail. So, and I don't want very large, uh, I don't want very large places of rock highlight. So I'm just taking some yellow ochre and some white. Honestly, 
probably probably okay. I'll just add a little umber. I was gonna say just just go with that, but I'll add just just a little umber to make it not quite so yellow ochre bright. <laughs> there, a little more umber. Okay, now right up in here, I'm just gonna touch down, uh, just ooh, just here and there, not too much. And what, what I'll do is I'll take my finger and just blend, boom, and that will create the effect of a little touch of highlight, you know, coming through this mountain pass and hitting just a couple of those rocks. I don't know. I think it's interesting. I'm going to go a little darker. I think it's just too bright. Too bright. I see a little highlight just up here. Just, oh yeah, there we go. See that just, boom, catching the edge. I like that. Let me see, right? There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. I see some trees. I'm just going to wiggle my brush, wiggle my brush, and then soften the bottom. Now, these can be the worst looking, silliest little trees. In fact, I don't even need why bother with that brush. Number four bristle brush. This will be faster, <laughs> much faster. And there you go. Don't want it to look like grass, but just just like little trees. But why bother if you know you're going to mist so intensely over this. So there you go. In some ways, that's actually a better look if you're not going to spend all day. Now, if you spend all day with that micro filter brush, you'll get a better look with that than even like this. But if you want to sp spend only a few minutes and for the sake of the lesson, we don't want to spend much time on this. Then there you go. It's a good way to do it. All of a sudden, I've got a thousand little trees back there. All of this is very dry, obviously, and we have foundation medium worked into all of this. If you don't have foundation medium, you need to take a brush with foundation medium and just give you a, a glaze coat. But if you work it into the paint, you don't need to do that. So I'm not quite as liner brush thin there. I'm happier with that right there. Just just not running yet, but it's close. And the brush looks about the same. Now I'm going to set this up here and begin to roll and feather this glaze coat right along. That's probably enough. Let me wipe the brush out on a paper towel. And I'm going to go up here and blend this before I lose the opportunity to. Oh, look at that. Oh, you could literally paint clouds over your mountain. That's what I'm doing. I'm really more, yeah, more painting a cloud over the mountain than just mist. I mean, it's, it's, this is strong right here. Right up in here, it's fairly dark, so I'm going to be kind of careful. It is only going to dark in more. A little foundation medium in that as well. Help that to flow without thinning it too much. And of course, up in here, it's got to be covered. Got to be covered. But as you go up here, then just allow your brush to, to, to lightly bounce along the canvas and create little little pockets, little shapes of bushes and trees and whatnot. But of course, down here, you might as well just fill it in solid. Yeah, all right. Yes, 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 we can live with that. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. I think we'll be all right. Okay, I see a tree. Do you see it? It's right here. Boom. So I give myself a line. I typically just just do a few touches to begin with with my number four bristle brush just a few touches and then expand that tree left and right in a zigzag manner okay there we go more color i see a rock might as well go ahead and get that underpainted that's well, underpainted now should i have underpainted but with green it'll be okay <laughs> there we go These are fairly foreground trees. This is a painting where our midground is basically misted out. I don't always do that. It's not always my favorite type of painting, but in this particular situation, it's what I wanted. It's what I planned to do. So I'm going to go with it. I think it, it works for this scene. Oh, that's pretty right there. Let me real quick just get some brown, black, all my dark colors. Everything that's dark, I'm just going to throw it together. I include red as a dark color, typically. And I'm going to underpaint this area 
dark. <laughs> there you go. That's enough of the dark, though. I don't want to go crazy with it. I'm going to take some yellow, green, white, and whatever mud is left over. I'm going to begin to underpaint with a lighter tone. If you don't underpaint with lighter colors for the highlight areas, you're going to have a flat underpainting, which is okay, but it's not as good as having underpainting with depth. If you do an underpainting with depth, then you will, that's what I'm doing here, modeling my underpainting, then you'll have a much easier, in my opinion, no, it's fact, it's not even my opinion, you're going to have an easier time highlighting <laughs> if you have depth in your underpainting. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to just place that in and around here. A little more. Thin it down. There we go. Okay, so it's nice. Because there would be a reflection. And this is going to be fairly turbulent water, but and then having the dark there is actually going to help me as well. So there you go. Rinse out my brush. Just use that brush without any paint. A little bit of water in it and just spread that around. Okay. A little darker. A little darker right up under here. I think I think that would be appropriate. Yeah, look at that. That's what water's already looking better. Okay. And then right up in here, just brown and black. Let's get uh, maybe more defined rocks. Oh, there it is. Now I can really see some water rushing around those rocks. I think that'll look really cool. I'm excited to see how that turns out. Okay. Well, we'll let that dry. That'll that'll be good. We'll lock that in, you know, won't mess it up. While I'm waiting on that to dry, let me take my number four bristle brush and I'd like to go ahead and highlight using some of our yellow ochre, cad yellow, white, uh, tiny, tiniest bit of our sap green. See how I break the bristles open by pressing that brush down into the paint? And I may just come up here and tap. Oh, it's the easiest way to make a nice little tree, isn't it? So I'll tap along, not filling, not filling everything in. And then I'll come back in with my finger and blend it. Oop. Of course, you can use a, you can use a brush to blend, a dry brush or damp brush, probably be better. But these are water-based, non-toxic acrylic paints, at least the ones that I use. And so I've got no trouble getting my finger in there. Cool. Yeah, look at that. We're starting to develop the the foliage there. And I think that's so pretty. Now, maybe don't don't do anything up on this edge that you're overly liking or overly caring about because we'll probably mess that edge up a bit, but that's all right. You know what I mean? Obviously, when uh, uh, let's keep I was going to say I want to do something different. I almost painted a rock right here, but I'm just going to leave it grass. Who cares? <laughs> there you go. Our lights, of course, coming in through this. We don't want to highlight the whole painting, but I want to do the spotlight effect where it looks like I just picked up a little more of our cad yellow where it looks like we've got more of a well just that spotlight all right love the fan brush when it comes to painting grass get it wet there just wet dry it off so it's damp and I can just take and tap the paint that I have now and if, if your paint dries, no big deal. Here's what you do. You just pick up a little more color on the brush. See up here, already dry. There, so you just pick up a little more color on the brush. I like that. This just gives you a different texture. You can experiment with both textures. Need another paper towel. What I'm gonna do is rinse that brush off. Come in here, darker. This needs to get darker. There it is. That's pretty. There it is. See, I think this is a little further away, maybe. So I'm going to slice across it like this to just create a smaller texture. Or do you feel like it's a little further away? Light's coming through, so that would mean we've got a shadow from this tree like that some way. Cool. I don't know. Little by little, working this together. Leave some of that yellow ochre shining through. See that? That's pretty there. All my dark colors. So blue, black, brown, green, and red. And this tree, according to the sketch, I like that, so we'll stick to it. I had it coming all the way off, so we'll continue with that. 
There we go. Of course, it'd be kind of hard to change now. I guess you could paint, turn it into a cloud, I guess. Just using the fan brush just to, to dabble in these limbs. I like the background. don't want to cover it too, too much. There, but I do want to cover this left side. It's all kind of unfinished here. Get that nice and covered. I'm going to stop right about there. Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at that. By allowing your brush to break apart into shapes like that. See, oh, yeah, you get some good textures and details. Cross right over that. Boom. Good. Oh, nice. Can live with that. Good. It's got good pockets of negative space, the in and out areas. It looks natural. I did not thin this down. I do want this to be fairly thick. And I'm going to just carve in some of those details to these rocks here. And you see, I'm just touching. So to make a rock, you just touch. And you don't really know what it's going to look like until you start painting. Then as you paint, then you pick out individual areas to the rock. Does that make sense? You don't have to just get up here. Oh, I'm going to paint a rock and here's that, you know, no, just touch, touch with the brush and see where it goes. And then you use the shapes that are happening and you work with them. You don't try to make anything right off the bat. Just use the shapes that are happening. There, it's exactly the way I paint a rock. Just at least kind of bring in a highlight, maybe, where you would expect to see it. Yeah, there we go. Now, I'm going to darken that so it's not as vibrant with just some muddy green that I had laying on the palette. And I'll go through here and add a little of that. And yeah, tie it back a little. Okay, there we go. Black, just break that up. That to me, that's better. Just a little there, you know, play around with that more later, maybe, but it'll probably be okay. It'll probably be okay. I see some purple shadows here. These trees. Oh, it makes a difference. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It definitely makes a difference. Okay, I know there's going to be purple shadows in this tree and in my painting. In my painting. There we go. Might as well do them while I got the brush in my hand, right? Let's save me a step. It's good stuff. Purple shadows even on these rocks? Why not? Maybe I'll take a little uh, microfiber brush, some yellows and whatnot. This is really just tons of yellow and white and a little mud. And just come along and add a detail here and there. Just to show, oh, there's a sparkle. There's a, there's an extra brush stroke in there that I think is just nice, you know. Oh, there it is. Just where you can see it in the higher contrast area where it's nice and dark behind it. You get a little contrast and oh, good stuff. All right. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, that's busier. Busy is good in the foreground. People talk about, oh, paint, you don't want your painting to be too busy. Oh, you, yeah, you could probably make it too busy, but it's more you're going to make it too symmetrical. It's actually kind of hard to make it too busy. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.